The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell. Another big morning of economic data. We got retail sales out there weaker than the market expected. We got producer prices, wholesale prices uh, dropping the most in two and a half years is the headline I saw. We got that number 36 minutes ago at 8.30 a.m. this morning. And let's just drill it down to a minute. Minute charts on the S&P, so you can see the initial spike higher to 45.41. We drive down to 45.20. We're just above that level right now. You still got markets in positive territory. S&P futures up by 13 points right now, trading at 45.24. We get the NASDAQ 100. You see the volatility there up above 16,000. We came into that number right at about 16,000. We're just under the 16,000 price point. You still get the NASDAQ 100 up by more than half a percent, up by 82 points at 15,962. You get the Dow right now up by about two tenths percent, just under 35,000, 34,948. The Russell positive by three at 1809. We jump over to crude. Crude trading a bit lower, off 86 pennies at 77.40. Gold getting some volatility. Check out that volatility. I was going to say we got some action in yields. We got some action in the dollar index. Somewhat reversing what we had happening yesterday. These are minute charts just to illustrate the volatility since 8.30 a.m. this morning. Let's back it up to a 10-minute chart so you can see the spike we got yesterday on the CPI number and the spike we're getting today. A little bit of a reversal on the PPI number and retail sales. We're going to break down these numbers in a moment. And you could call it the main event, yields, all in focus. And boy, it was a rip roaring rally, man. I think that was the test of that channel line. At least that's what I'm going with until the market proves me wrong. But right now, we are well above that channel line. Decisive break yesterday. We get a little pullback today. But all things considered, man, we're talking about right now a 10-year yield sitting right at 4.5%. Even with that little pullback, we're still sitting right at 4.5%. The yield on the 10-year and we have the two-year Treasury yields actually rising. Yeah. Let's see. Let's pull it up. Let's pull up the yield curve for a moment. Come on. Cooperate with me here. Cooperate one. Sorry. My screen's clicking a little bit. And there's the yield curve. Yeah. So yields up across the board. Check it out, man. You got... The two-year right now approaching 4.9, up by seven basis points. And you got the 10-year just above 4.5, I mentioned, up about seven basis points as well. All right, let's jump into some of the retail sales now. It's going to be a great program, man. We got a couple great guests lined up. We got our man Kevin Hinks. He's coming up after the first break. We talk to him every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We got our man Teddy Kegstat. Great day to talk to Teddy with some currency action, some yield movement on the heels of yesterday as well. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. So two great interviews for the program. But let's get into it. We kick things off with retail sales. Retail sales fall by less than forecast ahead of the holidays. So the market was looking for quite a pullback here. Retail sales month over month, they were looking for a 0.3% decline. They only got a 0.1% decline, okay? Excluding autos and gas, which have really pulled back, right? gasoline. We know autos have been pulling back as well so from some of the other data points we've got out there. They were looking for a 0.2% increase. You get a 0.1% increase and the control group, group month over month right in line at 0.2%. Seven of 13 categories posted declines led by furniture and car dealers. Gas sales weren't as big of a drag on the headline number as feared considering how much pr pump prices fell in the month. Meanwhile, outlays increased at personal care and grocery stores, food, right? Is food ever going to go back to a normal pricing? I don't think so, man. Uh, the so-called control group, which uh, control group sales, and that is used to calculate GDP and excludes food services, auto dealers, building material stores, and gas stations rose 0.2%, suggesting the fourth quarter is off to a decent start. Yeah, the U.S. consumer, man. 
just powering forward. So we get retail sales this morning, slightly off where the market was thinking. Gasoline, a big number in there in terms of not as big of a drag as the markets were thinking originally. Um, but nonetheless, now these are unadjusted for inflation. I right, think about that. The retail sales number, the value of retail purchases, unadjusted for inflation is decreasing. Now, the next part of that, though, is we just got inflation yesterday. It was unadjusted for inflation, but what was the CPI headline yesterday? Zero. There's no inflation. You don't need to adjust it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm ballparking. Okay, I'm generalizing. But month over month, when you're seeing these numbers, because at first I started thinking, oh, unadjusted for inflation. Wow, that really, no, it doesn't on a month over month basis, man, because on a month over month basis on the CPI, we're basically at zero right now. That was the number yesterday, okay? So unadjusted for inflation, not as big of a discrepancy as you might think if you were adjusting numbers for inflation. Nonetheless, man, we got to pull back uh, market, digesting these numbers right now as we come into uh, Wednesday trading and going to be interesting to see what kind of a pullback we potentially get. We're 20 points off the high right now. All the pressure has been to the upside, man. But boy, we got some we got some optimism um, built into this market when you just traded up 400 points. We're approaching one eight, nine percent acceleration just from where we were less than three weeks ago in this market. And so I imagine we're going to have to digest some of that. But I talked about it on the program yesterday, man. 4634 seems like the next stop, right? You just take on a Fibonacci basis. Where that acceleration began to lower prices, okay? October 17th, you trade from a price point of about 44.20. You drive down to a low of 41.22. The 1 to 1.618 expansion of that pullback, right? We've gotten 100% of it back, but we're already pushing 45.20. You get up above 4,600, and you're at the 1 to 1.618 expansion, okay? That's also correlating to the recent highs you got back in July. Probably the next point this market's going for, man. Now, where do yields go to get the market there? That's what I'm not quite sure of yet. The relationship here is pretty interesting when you look at, I mean, you know, what happens? Yesterday, yields pull back dramatically. Well, the market goes up 2%. Today, you have yields going back up a bit. Well, the markets are up nonetheless, okay? Market readjusting on a temporary basis, at least, to what we've seen happen on the economic data. But boy, it's pretty interesting. We're 20 ticks off of the high yesterday of where we were at 9.30 in the morning, right? 20 ticks we've given up from that spike. Uh, we came into that CPI number at about 107.15, and we're sitting at 108.10 right now on the 10-year. You jump over to the dollar index. As I mentioned, talking to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. Always a good conversation, but I love that we talk to him on Wednesdays because we usually get some good data occasionally, and today's a good one for sure with retail sales out there and yields moving and dollar moving. Quite the pullback yesterday as you got the dollar driving the action down from 105.57 down to 104 yesterday and just a barely a blip higher as the dollar index continuing to weigh. All right, folks, stay tuned. It's going to be quite a day in the markets. Quite a day is every day, it seems like, right now with volatility. And why not? We jump over to the VIX before we jump back. We get the VIX right now. We got a 13 handle on that spike yesterday. We're sitting relatively low, right next to the lows of yesterday at 14, 16. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. Dr. No man Kevin Hanks from the Schwab Network Fast Market. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educate investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures trailing off a bit. We're off by uh, we're up by single digits right now. Still positive by nine points, trading at 45.20. We're about 20 points off of that spike high, though. To talk about some of the market action this morning, let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time from the Schwab Network Fast Market with your hosts Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and let's just jump right into it. Kevin, we got some data yesterday. We got some data again today. Yields kind of reverberating a bit. Uh, what do you think of the data this morning? Good morning, Kevin Hanks. Good morning, Tommy and Brian. You know, I look at everything, as you know, Tommy, from a, a, a prism of trading. And sometimes when you have a big day yesterday, you're just looking for to hold on to what you had and, and, and stay stable. So the data we got today is solid. The PPI number was disinflationary. The retail sales was firm to better than expected with revisions to last month, so even stronger. So I think the data today is good. Mortgage apps were a, a second week in a row of positive mortgage apps. I think the dollar is higher today because the U.K. inflation data that came out overnight was weaker than they thought it would be. So that's a good sign over in the U.K. that their inflation is coming down. Um that being said, Tommy, you know, the numbers all, the the, in, the futures all spiked when the number came out, but they've eased back down to very modest games, and the, the Russell's actually unchanged now. It's pretty wild in terms of just uh, the market moves we get on the instant that those numbers came out. You may yesterday, just staggering movements on the Thinkorswim platform. I got it up on that 830 number yesterday morning. We got spikes again, like you mentioned this morning, not quite as dramatic. Uh, what do you think about the pullback in the price of the um, fixed income, as in we have yields rising again a little bit today, Kevin, um, but that's not mattering with the market, right? Yesterday, yields dropped pretty dramatically on that CPI number. The market goes up 2 to 3%, depending on what you're looking at. This morning, we have a little bit of a pullback there, but still we have the NASDAQ 100 night right now sitting up about half a percent. Is this market right now, Kevin, you know, tied to link I, to yields. I'm trying to wrap my brain around how we actually have yields moving in the opposite direction of yesterday, not getting the full move back, of course, but it's not stopping the market, man. We got positive prices. How are you looking at that relationship right now with yields moving kind of differently as to yesterday and the market just loving it either way right now? Well, I, I think we live right now in a trading environment that's a very microwave trading environment where 
one good, you know, the momentum that stayed in the market yesterday all day was pretty incredible. It, but high frequency trading will do that. They take things to the final destination almost quicker than the, you know th- th- than the move there. There is there's very few grinding moves now, right? That that yeah. that trading yesterday was a gap up up to those levels. So I think you have to adjust the way you look at these markets and trade them based on high frequency trading and electronic trading and how quickly things get from not point A to point B, but point A to point Z, frankly, Tommy. Yeah, they didn't leave much room, man. They digested that CPI print, and uh, markets crawled a bit throughout the day to higher price, but boy, that move happened almost in an instant yesterday morning. Uh, with that, Kevin, we had you know all of that economic data that kind of gets sucked out of the market. We still got some retail sales, um, excuse me, retail companies that you guys were talking about yesterday. We got some earnings coming out. Uh, we march forward from here. Do you guys have any equities you're talking about on fast market coming up at 12 today, Kevin? Yeah, we got more good names coming out with earnings. Some after the bell today, like Palo Alto Networks and Cisco, and then we've got Walmart tomorrow morning. That should be you know a revenue number for 90 days that's bigger than some small countries uh, <laughs> so it's going to be an impressive number but you know walmart's had a nice run and look at you know the bar for walmart is kind of high based on the run they've had we talked a lot on yesterday's show about a low bar for earnings versus a high bar for earnings and just look at the price action in target that had yeah. a very low bar for earnings and tjx that had a very high bar for earnings both came out with good numbers but Target's up big based on that, and TJX is down slightly on, on their numbers. So, yeah, I think there's a pretty high bar for Walmart's earnings tomorrow, but we got great news in Target uh, overnight or, or, or this morning. And uh, so, yeah, it, it, it'll go over these. But I like networks, obviously, cybersecurity, that's always a fun one to look at. Yeah, I was taking a look at the chart on Walmart as you were talking about it. Boy, uh, so much for the pullback of last year, right, with that stock dropped out of thin air basically from 160 down to below 120. And it's been a one-way trip basically to all-time highs, pushing 169, 167 this week coming into that earnings event. Kevin, I appreciate the time as always on a busy morning. We'll be watching Fast Market at 12 today, and we look forward to talking to you tomorrow, man. Thanks for having me, Ken. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're th talking three great stocks, Palo Alto Networks. Uh, yeah, and how about Walmart, right? How about that chart of Walmart? You're talking about a company. You jump over to the Analyze tab, okay? You jump over to the Fundamentals tab. You're looking at about a $5.20 move priced into their earnings on either direction. If you jump over to the entire week, you're talking about about just slightly over that level. $5.44 is the move priced in for their earnings this week. Uh, not too large of a move for a pretty stable company, but expectations going to be even higher now with what Target did. And that's a perfect segue to jump into those Target numbers because, boy, you talk about a pullback, man. Uh, pretty remarkable. So many companies gave up the entire COVID acceleration right? Disney comes to mind. Companies that actually traded back to a time and place in history where, I mean, remember the uncertainty and the fear that took place. Uh, it was right around my birthday during COVID. My birthday is March 20th, folks. And I think schools in Florida shut down like March 15th, 16th, 17th, something like that in 2020. It was just a few days prior to my birthday. Uh, and we kind of all knew it was coming a little bit. Things were creeping up. I remember saying to the people in my household on a Friday, it was Thursday night, I think. Let's back it up for two seconds here as we come in. We got five minutes till the next break. I'm going to have to go back that far pretty quickly. Let's see if I can get back. Here we go. We're in 2021, and every click is a month, which is crazy. Okay. It was March 13th, I believe, the week before my third birthday. And I remember saying to the kids in my household on Thursday the 12th, I, I believe so, I think so, right? I remember saying, hey, tomorrow's probably the last day you're going to be in school. I would take anything out of the locker that you have on Friday and make sure you bring it home, and that's basically what happened. We were closed down by the 16th, 17th in Florida. Things changed state by state. Um, nonetheless, point being, right, Target, almost back to COVID lows, man, when we didn't even know if the economy was going to exist. Uh, Disney in the same accord. But guess what? This morning, you're catching a little bit of a lift. 
for context here, you know, we're up by $16 percentage wise, quite a move. But on this chart, you see where my cursor is, right? We're basically just back to the lows of where we were in June on this equity. But yes, a low bar for Target and they beat. What's going to happen is you got Target up by $16. That's only putting a lift of about 50 pennies. And that's with the positive market here, okay, in Walmart shares. And for some context here, okay, Target started yesterday at 108. Target had a nice day yesterday already coming into their earnings event. So Walmart's going to have some lofty expectations coming out with their numbers. And as I mentioned, about a $5 move priced in for Walmart on their earnings after the bell tonight. All right, folks, don't miss the opening bell. We're coming back in three minutes. The market going to be digesting retail sales. We're going to talk about producer prices when we get back. I haven't talked about those yet. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the Magnificent Seven. We'll take a look at yields as well. And then don't forget, Teddy Kegstack coming up at 40 past. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P futures up by about 14 points right now, trading at 45.25. Nasdaq 100, you're up by half a percent, 15,953. Get the Dow up 98 points in the Russell in positive territory by two. Crude off a dollar, excuse me, dollar on the dot at 77.24. We check in on gold, gold pulling back to 1966, and we got to check in on yields, man. The 10-year right now off by about 16 ticks at 108.13. That, of course, putting some 
strength in the dollar as we have yields rising, right? We have the price of the 10-year pulling back. We have yields rising. You have slight dollar strength. But boy, it's very interesting to look at the pullback we got in the dollar versus what a yield chart uh, looks like in terms of the 10-year. It's a price chart, okay? But boy, the dollar just holding up so well. I'm going to ask Teddy about that coming up at 40 past the hour. Just rip-roaring pullback on the dollar index, and we've basically got no lift, right? The dollar index is right back where we were at 11.30 a.m. yesterday. And in comparison there, at 11.30, just for some context, we were right near 108.25. So you've basically had the 10-year pull back 10 to 12 ticks on the price it's trading at, and the dollar's sitting right at that level right now. It's quite a pullback in the dollar index. All right, let's jump around to some of the equities with action this morning. We talked about Target, see how they open 13.3% to the positive side. We jump around some of the FANG stocks. Amazon, up by 7 tenths percent. Apple shares up by four tenths percent this morning. You jump to Microsoft up by four tenths as well. We always talk about Google. Uh, my man Tommy, he's not joining us this morning. He was with me the last couple of days. Pretty remarkable how often people in the household are watching YouTube these days in every household, and that is just one facet of Google's business. I always talk about now. There's always a multiple you can buy something at and you can sell something at. The multiples on YouTube if it went public by itself right now, would probably be astronomical. So be careful always saying, you know, there's Kevin. We just talked to Kevin. He's a great expression. I'm going to um, surmise it, okay? I, I may chop it up in terms of the words. But basically the sentiment is, you know, there's a price that I'd, willing, the, that I'd be willing to buy an equity at, any equity at, and there's a price that I'd be willing to sell any equity at, okay? Because any equity be can, can become overpriced, and underpriced, and that has to do with multiples generally. Uh, Google up by four tenths percent. We jump over to Tesla. They've been in the press recently. It's been a nice trip from 205 last week up to 243 in the pre-market. But you're dropping. You give back those gains. You're back to 237.60 right now for Tesla shares. And let's jump into those PPI numbers before we talk a little mortgage demand. So. PPI, wholesale prices fall 0.5% in October for the biggest monthly drop since April of 2020. There it is, two and a half years. Wholesale prices fell 0.5% in October. Now, these can be particularly volatile, and they don't always trickle down to the CPI numbers, but it's a core component, right? And I say core, no pun intended. Uh, the prices producers are paying somewhere down the line translates to consumer prices in some fashion. It has to, okay? The producer price index, which measures final demand costs for business, declined 0.5% for the month. Market was looking for a 0.1% increase. Excluding food and energy, core PPI unchanged. They were looking for a 0.3% increase. If you include food, if you exclude, excuse me, Excuse me. If you exclude food, energy, and trade services, the index increased 0.1%. Always interesting how they're cherry picking what they're taking in and out. Um, nonetheless, they talk about retail sales a little bit in there as well. Jumping over to mortgage demand. Kevin referenced this as well. Climbs to the highest level in five weeks. Not that long ago, right? After interest rates move lower. Average rate 7.61. Same as last week when I was on this program telling you about it. Applications to refinance a home increased 2% for the week and were 7% higher than the same week a year ago. Folks, I love this phrase. I say it all the time. Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving. Okay? The numbers of people who are refinancing is a very small number. So when you start talking about percentage increases and you start talking about a 2% increase on a small number, you start talking about a 7% increase on a small number, they can be very deceiving because they in themselves can be very small numbers, obviously. Applications for mortgage to purchase a home increased 3% from the previous week and were 12% lower than the same week a year ago. Those conforming loan balances, $726,000 or less is the number there, but mortgage demand up by 2.8% last week, okay? And um, yeah, 7.61% is the number with points decreasing to about 0.67, and that is for a 20% down payment conforming loan. Yeah, not surprising, but 
be careful of these types of statements, man, okay? Be careful of reading about refinancing a home loan increasing 2% for the week and 7% higher than a year ago because those are very small numbers. And percentages on small numbers, folks, don't give you the whole picture, to put it lightly. All right, let's talk a little bit about those target earnings, man. Earnings overshadow sales decline. Yeah, holiday gift items under $25 to attract value-focused shoppers is what they're looking for. And I've told you, man, I talked about Tommy, my man. He's out there in the living room. He's having some waffles. He's having some, uh, he's having some juice, right? He's not on the program today, but boy, he loves Target, man. And we've turned it into a little bit of a Toys R Us experience, right? They get the game systems in there. We go in there. We play with uh, we play with the, the music sound systems. We like to bump some beats. We like to play DJ in the music aisle. It's a great user experience, but I've talked about, man, Target is expensive, man. Period. End of sentence. Uh, but nonetheless, let's get into the numbers. Comp sales fell almost 5% in the three months ended October 28th from the year prior. Big numbers, man. Um, earnings, though, growing 36% to almost a billion dollars in the third quarter, added, aided by tight inventory and expense management. Analysts had expected earnings of 685. Now, as somebody that's in Target all the time, okay, and I only have a few sections of the store that I'm purveying, okay, surveying, uh, we go into, of course, the toy section. Very familiar with the toy section. I go into the men's clothing section. I go into the kids' clothing section, okay? The toy section for the boys, uh, for the kids, okay? Not for the boys. For the kids in general, and we like the dinosaurs. We like Lightning McQueen, okay? I did notice that I said that, man, it's remarkable that they don't, they weren't refurbishing it that often right we go in there all the time and of course i'm looking for new toys for tommy to play with not to buy okay just to play with to survey uh and what was happening was they weren't doing it man the the, the shelves were kind of empty but i knew from being in the market that guess what man okay they're getting rid of all this inventory okay they're not playing these games anymore that they're just going to keep stocking inventory keep stocking the shelves they're getting rid of the inventory uh and what I'm in there often enough that I see it happen. They put them on the shelves, they give them a period of two months, something like that, and then they start discounting them right away. And they discount them and they discount them until that product's gone and they make room for the next one. But it was interesting how some of those shelves were a little bit bare and I found myself saying, you know what, man? They're getting rid of all these goods. We know they had an inventory problem and there you go. The numbers say it, man. Um, yeah, earnings. Why? Tight inventory and expense management. 971 million. Market likes it. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Teddy Cakes. That don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we get the S&Ps up by about 11 points, a little bit of volatility there. We get the dollar index right now up about 30 pennies at 104.36. To talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report. He puts out new issues every Monday with updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out on the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. And don't forget about the webinars he's got under the services tab at TFNN. You can check out Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads, as well as his Japanese Candlestick Pattern Stock and Option Strategies webinars, both of those available under the services tab for 97 bucks. They're archived. You can watch them as many times as you like. And boy, we got some action. Let's jump into it. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, it's been quite a uh, 48 hours in this market, almost 24 hours in this market from that CPI print we got yesterday, Teddy. Where do you want to kick things off, man? Well, we definitely had some explosive volatility yesterday. Obviously, we hammered a big lower move low on the dollar index. You know, I mean, right now you have the U.S. dollar as well as yields in a corrective mode right now. I think, you know, overall, there's no confirmation of a trend reversal. That's for sure. You know, I think that the hype of it all, especially with rates, is getting way ahead of themselves, you know, as far as where the yield curve is or is not going. You know, so, but I think that the volatility is very reflective. I mean, you had a two and a half handle move in the in the 10 year, excuse me, in the 30 year and a huge move in the 10 year last year or last yesterday. So of course, the dollar is going to get sacked like it did, you know, but if if you look at the levels like we had, especially in the Tiger Forex report, we're coming into very corrective areas. So the target levels are nice. Now we it had an extreme move yesterday, I was looking for us to creep up to these levels over three to five trading sessions, not in one. You know, so uh, that volatility factor, I, I think that's something that is needs to be paid attention to. Um, we had a, extreme volatility off of not new and not the news wasn't anything that should have sparked that kind of volatility. So I think you, you're running extremes right now. You probably squeezed out a lot of weak longs and shorts yesterday, especially with that interest rate move. And I think that you can see the pullback today is profit taking just off of yesterday. But I'd be cautious with these new higher move highs and lower move lows, especially in the FX pairs, because the question is, if it's a correction, while well, we're bottoming and topping out, we're not we're not reversing trend, you know, and that's what you really have to pay attention to. Do you find yourself, Teddy, trying to do the math on the, the Fed and where they go from here? I mean, that's a lot of focus, of course. We had Chairman Powell the prior week. Um, and then, of course, you got economic data on the Friday, and then we have the CPI, and we got PPI week number today. Uh, a lot of conversation, of course, is about what the market's pricing in maybe for even cuts next year. 
Is that mm-hmm. something that you try and wrap your brain around and try and not predict, but are you trying to work that out in your head or are you just kind of looking at, at, at the currencies and, and the momentum and the trends that they're working on right now? Great question. Long term, absolutely. I'm looking at that. I mean, if the Fed, even if they don't go dovish, just the fact that they would say that they're stopping, you know, sure. for a, whether it's three, six months or just in, not indefinitely, but they're, you know, say, let's say they're, we're going to stop and yeah. we're not going to think of being hawkish unless the numbers really go back the way they were. If we're in a situation like that, and I think that's pretty much where we're going to be. Remember, we got an election year next year and we have over eight trillion dollars. See, our our Fed and our Treasury Department in their ultimate genius over the last five years and ten to ten years, they financed everything like they did in the nineties under the Clinton administration. They use one through five ten year notes to finance the whole of government. You don't do that. You do that when you want to window dress your own balance sheet. You know, that's where you got your you know supposed surplus back in the nineties that it was a synthetic move with uh, because of interest rates. Now we're gonna pay the price next year. We have eight point some trillion coming due in, in the next 12 months before Christmas of next year, as well as the next two to three trillion we're gonna tack on just for regular spending for 2024. That's not including anything else they asked for, for Ukraine, Israel, the illegal aliens, you know. So that's a lot of money for us, the treasury market to absorb, you know. Sure. So I think that right now, especially the Fed is looking at that issue. They're like, well, how are we going to raise 10 to 12 trillion? That's a trillion dollars a month they basically have to raise starting in the in January. You know, how are you going to do that if you keep on hiking rates? You're not going to yeah. get anyone to invest in bonds. Your auctions sure. are going to get crushed, you know, not to mention, hopefully they're going to do it in 30 year notes. You know, so because even at the rates are at now, it's going to be a lot better than if they keep raising rates over the next five to six years and they keep doing what they're doing. You're looking at having more bills come due in five to 10 years at absorbent rates, you know, refinancing, you know. So hopefully fiscal responsibility hits the Fed and, the, and also the Treasury Department, because otherwise we're, we're going to have a really big problem with the credit markets, you know, and what is that going to do to the dollar? Well, it could actually make the dollar an extreme bull, but the value of the dollar is going to collapse and the velocity of money is going to collapse as well. So that doesn't so that means that it doesn't matter how strong the dollar is because inflation is just going to just outweigh it. You know, so I'd be very, hopefully that's not the situation, but that's what's looming. So that's where I'm looking in the long term forecast and short term. I still think that you have to think that there's possibly another quarter point between now and the next two to three Fed meetings before they go on a pausing cycle. So that means we're we're probably capping where as far as how high the 30 year and 10 year and even the short term rates are going to rally. You know, I would watch. I think you'll probably see a lot of action in the smaller interest rates, you know, like the short terms, like the euro dollars and the ones, twos, threes and fives, your, your notes and stuff like that. Um, so I think that's where your volatility is going to be. But if the if if I'm right in that scenario with the with the bigger interest rate contracts, that means the dollar is going to get into a range trade probably for the next three to six months that's going to be established. But I don't think that we've seen the high in the dollar index yet, you know, just okay. and also I don't think we've seen the low, you know, in the uh, treasuries either. I think there's still one more spike. Even if it doesn't take out the lows, we should probe those bottoms before we have a confirmation of at least ending the hawkish stance by the Fed. Yeah, and it is interesting. Maybe we, you know, we're getting quite a pullback. We're already what 22 ticks. I got the 10 year off mm -hmm. of where we were trading at last night. Quite an interesting pullback. But the market, um, market doesn't care, man. Market going higher, picking up on yesterday's acceleration. What do you think about crude? All the talk, uh, you know, crude 77 handle. Uh, what do you think of the price of action in crude this morning? Uh, you know what? I like the stability right now. I just don't think it's. I, I'm not bearish on crude. I think right now you're in a consolidating range trade i'm still bullish especially with geopolitical tensions and we're also heading into winter time you know sure. i can't imagine that commodity prices are going to stay stable to even deflating over the next three to six months and i think that as long as if if those trends continue i can't see how you're not going to see a spike in oil now let's say that we have an abnormally warm winter maybe maybe then that would keep things 
better. But if we have especially a cold winter, some major storms that hit the U.S., depending on especially like the Northeast, you know, and things like that, um, or even let's say things happen in Texas like happened over the past couple sure. of years, you know, like if the, those temperature extremes hit those areas, well, then I can see a nice spike in oil for sure, you know, so because you're just going to. The demand, I think, will be increasing then. And we could still see another pop, you know. And now, if the Middle East keeps on blowing up, then $100 oil is still on the charts. And I can't believe it's Thanksgiving already next right. week. Uh, but we'll probably talk to you next Wednesday. One more time before the holiday. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Okay, take care, Tommy. Take care, Teddy. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for one more segment. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Watch out for this market today, man. We got weakness. We got the S&Ps up by nine points right now. But, boy, I was jumping around during the break. We got the NASDAQ 100. We're giving up some of those gains, man. Look where we were at 830, and look where we were even on the opening bell, up to 15,965. So only a slight move. But, boy, when I was jumping around through some of these fang stocks, Apple, of course, holding up well, man. Uh, almost uh, maybe a place of safe haven, as is the case usually, right? But Apple up by half a percent right now. You jump to Microsoft. They give up their gains, man. You just sold off, what, 3 to $4 on Microsoft shares on the open. How about NVIDIA? 
from 500 to 487. You give up 12 bucks like that. NVIDIA is off by 1.7% right now. Amazon shares just traded from 148 to 145. You were near 147 on the open. I mean, check it out, man. Amazon gives back all of yesterday's acceleration. You came into the CPI number at 143. We're now below 145 for Amazon shares. What else we got? Tesla shares up 7 tenths percent right now. Meta shares down four tenths. I mean, look at these pullbacks, man. Be careful in this market. And yields in focus. Absolutely remarkable. We're at 108.07, man. We are within that first acceleration that we got right at 8.30 yesterday. Market's giving it up. Excuse me. As we got the 10-year right now, negative by 22 ticks as I speak right now. And what is that pushing? That's probably going to be pushing. Let's see. No, that's not the one I wanted. All right, let me find it real quick. Man, and as that's talking, I'm seeing a headline that the GM workers, all right, the yield on the 10-year right now, 4.53%. Okay, and let's jump over to GM as we end the program. Yeah, down about 8 tenths percent. GM union workers appear poised to vote down the record UAW deal. The workers want more. They want more. They're not satisfied. This market's not satisfied, man, as the market's trade lower. Stay tuned, folks. Thanks so much for starting your trading day off right here. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Steve Rhodes, live at 11, fast market at 12. Larry will be doing a show at 1. He's in there live trading right now. Um, great workshop going on. Mr. Pezzavent does in there at 8 in the morning before my program. And let's end it with the VIX. Volatility index at 1416. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday. We'll talk to you tomorrow, folks.